This year is a landmark year for climate change. The United Nations uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change is meeting in Copenhagen as we speak. As the Danish convener of the summit said in our opening statement, this is the time to deliver, the place to commit. In Scotland, of course, we've already made commitments and begun the task of delivery. We know we have a moral duty to act because climate change will affect the poor and the vulnerable and developing countries first and worst. We were strongly reminded of this last month when the Scottish Government, the Scottish Human Rights Commission, British Trust for Conservation Volunteers Scotland and the Scottish Environment Protection Agency hosted a conference on climate change and human rights where we heard about the social impacts of climate change on the peoples of developing countries. But beyond the moral and environmental case, we in Scotland also see the low carbon economy as a vital opportunity for Scotland and for Scottish jobs. Scotland is a small, developed nation, and our strategy is that we should set an example to the industrialized world by acting as a model of best practice in tackling climate change. We hope that strong action by Scotland will influence other nations to agree an ambitious climate change treaty. On the 24th of June 2009, the Scottish Parliament, with the strong backing of civil society in Scotland, unanimously passed the industrialised world's most ambitious climate change legislation. Our statutory targets are to reduce emissions by 42% by 2020 and 80% by 2050. And this covers all recognised greenhouse gases and all international aviation and shipping. All party support for the Act and public support, including the business community, was and remains vital. The Act is designed to give certainty to industry, business and the public about Scotland's low-carbon future. Even before the Act was passed, we had published our climate change delivery plan to set out the scale of the transformation required in energy generation, energy efficiency, transport and the rural economy. We're now developing the detail of our report on proposals and policies to be published next summer. On Tuesday this week, the First Minister gave further impetus to our implementation by announcing the convening of the 2020 Climate Delivery Group. Influential people from business and from civic society who wish to help Scotland meet our ambitious climate change targets. We Yes, I will. Patrick Harvey. I wonder if the Minister could explain a little more clearly what the relationship between government and that group is going to be. The UK Climate Change Committee is the advisory body listed in the legislation which the, the government chose to stick to. What's the relationship between the two? Uh, there is no legal status of any kind for the 2020 Climate Change Delivery Group. They are a group of people who have uh, come together to help us uh, work our way through the issues. We very much welcome the contribution of time and effort that they will be making. Um, we have, as members will recall, the facility in the Act to designate who our legal advisers will be. For the time being, that is the UK Climate Change Committee, and only they will be providing the advice uh, that will form part of the parliamentary process in a formal sense uh, as we move forward. But I very much welcome the additional uh, support we'll get from that group. We published a carbon assessment of our spending in September. We'll now do this annually. And the in this integration of carbon into the key budget process is another world first. Of course, some of the impacts of climate change are already on the way. So on Tuesday, the First Minister also launched Scotland's finalised climate change adaptation framework. Scotland is one of the few countries to take a strategic approach to resilience to climate impacts. As further evidence of Scotland's commitment to respond to our global responsibilities in climate change, I'm pleased today to announce that we will be establishing 2014 Climate Change SALTA Fellowships. These fellowships will deliver on a commitment made as part of the Commonwealth Games bid to set up and deploy a carbon emissions reduction fund. The fellowships are funded by the fund, are to be targeted at uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation measures in Commonwealth countries, particularly those least able to deal with the impacts of climate change. Talented individuals from Commonwealth countries will be able to come to Scotland to share 
in our cutting-edge knowledge on climate change adaptation and mitigation. The fellowships will be rooted in knowledge and skills transfers in areas where Scotland is strong, for example, renewable energy technology, carbon capture and storage, community action on climate change, forestry, or climate change policy and legislation. I have a second announcement. Scotland is a nation with a record of supporting others in the development. Our first priority is to focus our efforts on developing our own contribution at home to low carbon development, but we also recognise that developing countries urgently need capacity building support through knowledge exchange and financial assistance to make low carbon energy possible in their countries too. In support of this, a range of Scottish organisations from across industry, government, academia and civil society have come together to cooperate with the efforts of the UK and EU in establishing this global framework for low carbon energy supplies. This partnership will work together to support these international efforts through offering expertise and capacity and to pull together packages for funding support where necessary. Assuming that the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change process is able to agree a legal and financial framework for low carbon mitigation and adaptation actions in developing countries during 2010, this Scottish partnership stands ready to work with the UK, our European and global partners, on a series of practical actions to deliver on this. Uh, finally, to prove that we are committed to taking real action on the ground, I'm delighted to announce that the Scottish Government will again be supporting Erthar on 27th March 2010. Erthar is an important symbolic event which brings together organisations and individuals worldwide to demonstrate their commitment to addressing climate change. To spread the reach of Erthar across Scotland, we'll be working jointly with COSLA and the STUC to promote next year's event. We'll switch off all non-essential lighting in our buildings promote the initiative of our staff and involve NDBPS and agencies in supporting Ethar as a visible sign that we are committed to change. Through our actions and, through, and these further announcements, Scotland is building a world-leading climate change framework and staying at the leading edge of international thinking on climate change. We think it's vital to let the world know about Scotland's stance to inspire others to take a similar strong action. We have therefore have had a full programme of engagement in the run-up to the Copenhagen summit. The First Minister wrote to Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General in September, to tell him about the level of commitment from Scotland. We have been commended by European Commissioners, the White House and the Governor of California. I attended the UN Climate Conference in Barcelona, where Scotland's programme was the subject of much international interest. As well as a spur to action by other countries, Scotland's framework can be a practical model for other nations. The Basque government has translated the act, so it will now be available to the whole Spanish-speaking world. Scotland is now a full member of the climate group, putting us on equal footing with key world players. Of course, we will work closely with the UK government on climate change. I would like to have been on the UK delegation to Copenhagen in line with other EU nations such as Spain, Belgium, Germany and Denmark, who will have representation from the devolved governments. But I shall be in Copenhagen all of next week to ensure that Scotland's climate change ambitions are widely promoted and as opportunities present themselves, will of course work closely uh, with the UK delegation as appropriate. On Monday, I will host a Scottish event for the international audience on Scotland's climate framework, the low carbon economy and Scotland's society's support for action. We'll be speaking to other world leaders at the Climate Group's Climate Leaders Summit the following day, as well as holding a range of ministerial bilateral meetings. And we will be reporting back to Scotland from the United Nations Conference Centre via a telepresence uh, link. I hope that Parliament will endorse this motion. It's a strong position on climate change that is intended to say to the countries of the world to challenge them uh, to look to what Scotland's doing and make sure that we are not alone in the targets we are setting ourselves. It's a strong message I intend that we take to the international community at Copenhagen next week. Let us all wish 
uh, all the nations who are engaged there the very best in their deliberations and let us hope for a successful and appropriate outcome.